Hey ladies, hey ladies, hey ladies, hey ladies, I am back. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. We're gonna try this from the phone. Hopefully we get a bit better reception um, from the phone. So let me just double check and make sure I um, I can see myself. And then we'll go ahead and get started. So hang tight with me just a second. For those of you who are live, for those of you who are replayers, thank you for joining me, loves. <clears throat> Happy Friday, everybody. I hope you're having an amazing weekend. And I hope you're having a great day so far. I want to talk about anger and resentment today. Um, loving the person that you hate. And like I was saying prior to getting off the first live video, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, something as harsh as like, you know, I hate you or somebody that I hate. No, not necessarily. You don't have to hate this person. But you got some strong feelings towards them. You got some really strong feelings towards them. Maybe you just don't like them. Maybe you can't stand the sight of them. Maybe it's just something you that is just like, I don't have nothing to do with you. Hey, Dorian, how are you, love? Thank you for joining me, dear. So I kind of really wanted to talk about that because I feel like that becomes such a big issue in so many of our relationships when we still have this anger and this resentment that we're holding on to and we can't seem to get past it. We can't seem to move forward. We can't seem to let it go. And so I really want to encourage you. There's a couple of things that I wanted to talk about. You're alive. I, I know. Bless God. Bless God for another day. Bless God for life. Bless God for the will to live. Bless God for his love. I'm alive, baby. Yes. Me and you both. Bless God for life. So I wanted to be sure that, you know, I kind of address this anger and this resentment um, and kind of just cover a couple of things that really can help us shift our perspective and shift the way we think in regards to this other person and in regards to the situation in regards to our own life and our own success and our own freedom and our own forward movement, how we can unplug, how we can let go from this anger, from this resentment. So I'm clearly, all right. <clears throat> okay, so. I kind of I kind of wanted to um tell y'all about this dream that I had. So before I even get to that, let me just let me just for those of you who don't know who I am, for those of you who are new to this group because we're growing this group. Um I have several of you coming in every single day and I'm so excited to uh connect with you ladies. My name is Candice Gray and I'm a courage coach, the courage coach, confidence and courage coach for women of faith and entrepreneurs who are struggling with fears and feelings of unworthiness. These feelings that are holding them back, that are keeping them stuck from walking confidently courageous in their purpose, doing the very scary things that God is calling them to do. So a lot of you who have been following me, you may have heard me talk a lot about um, the relationship with my father and just some issues that I've had with my father, like since forever, as far as far back as I can really remember. And so a lot of the stories I tell a lot of times will be about my relationship with my dad. And so God really has me in the season where I'm being transparent and I'm telling my story and I'm telling um, what's happened with us and how we're restoring our relationship. But there's a lot of feelings attached to the relationship with myself and my father and it's crazy because I've actually had a conversation with him. I told him, I said, Daddy, God is really calling me in this in this season to really talk about transparently our relationship and um, from my perspective and things that I felt and, and, and what I've got from our relationship. And so at, at this point now in life, of course, you know, we're having our like weekly lunches. We're going to go out to lunch tomorrow and we're just spending that time, spending that time that I, I never really felt like I, I got growing up because my father was such a workaholic. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown of kind of what happened to me and my dad, and then I'm going to move on because it's kind of relevant to what I want to talk about today. So my parents uh, were married about, I think, two years maybe before I was born. Um, at the age of four, my parents got divorced. My father left, my mother and myself. <clears throat> the thing was, is my parents grew up in church together. So it wasn't like he was 100% absent from my life because time and time again, you know, he would come to church and, you know, I would see him at church. I would spend time with him, you know, like every other weekend. But what happened was, is they were divorced from that, from the time I was four to the time I was 11. So there's a seven year span where they were divorced and I saw him periodically, but they ended up restoring their marriage. And they got remarried again to each other when I was 11. And then she got pregnant with my brother and had my brother. 
And so from there, now it's like the dynamics have shifted. Now my father's back in the house with us. I'm 11 years old, going into my teens, and it's just like, who are you? You've been gone this entire time. Now you want to come back into my house and be daddy and tell me what to do and tell me how to function? No. So this is what happened with us. We always just, you know, butted heads. And for me, there was like this anger and this resentment. Number one, because he wasn't there for those 11 years. And so when he came back, when they got remarried, the issue was is that he was always working. I mean, he was always working. My dad worked seven days a week. It's like he lived there. He spent more time at work than he did at home. And even when there was times I was like, hey, daddy, let me come with you. And he's like, I'm going to run some errands. Let me come with you. He said, no, I got to run these errands. I got stuff to do. And he wouldn't let me come with him. So in my mind, there was this 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 distance that started growing because I felt like he put work before me and I felt like he wasn't there. Now, granted, my story is not a story of I don't know my father. That wasn't my story. My story wasn't a story of my father just left me and never came back. That wasn't my story. My story was that my father was in my house, yet he was still absent. My father lived with us, yet he was never around. Things that I participated in growing up through high school, I sang in choirs, I played sports. He was never there at any of my games. You know, I would say, like, well, how many games did you come to of mine? Uh, how many of my, um, when we were singing, how many did you come to? You never came to my stuff because you were always working. And so there was this resentment and this anger that really festered in me growing up. In regards to my father not being around, not giving me that love and affection that I needed. Even though he always encouraged me in business. He always talked to me about persistence. He always, I am who I am today because of him, because of the great things that he did. But there was a part that he just couldn't grasp. And it was the part that I don't need your money. I need your presence. I don't need your presence as in like your gifts. I need your presence. I need you in my life. I need you here. He was quick to toss me off some money. If I needed money, I could go to daddy. And it still is kind of like that. But I, I wanted him to understand that, Daddy, it wasn't about the money. I don't want your money. I want you to be around. I want to spend that time with you. So for me, the issue started stemming in the fact that I had daddy issues. You know, you weren't around to give me this affection and this love that I felt like I needed. So I went around seeking it from other men. And so over the course of time, there was this anger and this resentment that had built up for my father. And it got to the point where... I remember even in college, when I finally went away to college after high school, it was a point I couldn't even tell him I loved him. He would tell me he loved me all the time. But I'd be like, okay. And I'd hug him, and I would just say, okay, and that was it. I couldn't even tell my father that I loved him. And I remember writing him a letter one time. <laughs> writing him this letter, and for me, this was my way of trying to express to him, you know, how I felt and how his decisions affected me. Well, back then, I was really big into poetry, you know, as a writer, and the letter was so poetic. I don't even think he got the letter. And even to this day, he still says that he has a letter and he would read it from time to time. But I don't think he understands it because it was like, when I read it again, I was like, Candace, he don't understand this. So I had to deal with my own feelings when it came to my father and really trying to set myself free from this anger and resentment um, because he always chose to work over me. And so even into my adult life, I remember a few years ago uh, when I was living in California, I just moved back here to Cincinnati in February. So a few years ago, my parents came out to visit, my mom, my dad, my brother, my grandmother. And I was really excited because that Sunday I was, I was going to be dancing at my church. Now, my father hadn't seen me dance at all at my new church in L.A., so I was excited that my family was going to be there to see me. Well, Saturday rolls around. We're in Mexico, actually, and we were headed back to L.A., we're in Mexico and he gets a phone call from work and we're in the car. And next thing I know, he gets off the phone and he's telling my mom to get him a ticket back home tonight. I need to go home tonight. I'm sorry, what? You need to go home tonight. You want to cut your trip short, get a last ticket and go home tonight so you can go back to work? I was hot. I was hot because I felt like once again, here we are as an adult, you're piecing out on me to go to work. And so that anger and that resentment just, it just kind of built up even more. And it's crazy because even throughout times where I felt like I had dealt with it and I had released it and let it go, I realized it was still there because when things happen, those feelings would come up. How many times have you been triggered by something that reminded you of a person that you have these feelings towards? Maybe they said something, maybe they did something, maybe it wasn't even them, it was somebody else who said something or did something and reminded you of what happened between you and this person that really triggered those thoughts. And sometimes we feel like we're over something. We feel like we've dealt with it already. 
And this is how we know that we haven't totally dealt with it is when we can be triggered and those thoughts continue to arise again. That's how we know we still need to process these feelings. So God brought me back to Cincinnati back in February and God had even told me before I got back here, because I came back to Cincinnati kicking and screaming. I was like, I love LA. I really don't want to go back to Cincinnati um, to, to live, but I understand that I'm being obedient to God. And God had to really pour into my heart and tell me that I'm bringing you back into this position in Cincinnati. Thank you, Lakeisha. Hey, how are you, love? I'm bringing you back into this position because I need you to restore this relationship with your father. Granted, there were other reasons God brought me back, but this is one of the major ones. I need you to st restore the relationship with you and your father. And so I'm like, okay. And I remember getting back here and still, even to this day, as he's making decisions to go to work, I would feel that twang of that anger and that resentment, like, you're going to work now. So you're going to work today, daddy? Like, and I had to catch myself on my emotions and my feelings, like, quit being like that. And so what I did, I was like, look, we need to just have like some lunches. We need to just have like a daddy daughter day every week. And so he's like, all right, cool. So that's what we've been doing. And we're working on restoring our relationship. And so for me, like I said, my story is not about not having a father in my life um, altogether, but it's about my father not being there physically. His physical presence wasn't there. And it really caused a lot of anger and resentment in my heart because I felt like he always chose work over me, even until to this day. And I remember my brother asking me, like, well, Candace, what do you want? You know, what do you expect from him? What do you want? And in that moment, my answer was, I want him to change. I want him to change. I want him to understand that his presence, him being in my life is necessary. As a young girl, it's important for us to have our fathers in our lives. And when they're not there, we seek that love and attention from other people. And so even though I'm older and I'm married now, I just, I want, I wanted him to change still. And my brother had to remind me, like, it's not fair for me to say, I want you to change. Because I can't change him. He said, you have to be the one to pray for him. You have to be the one to go to the throne of grace and ask God to work on his heart the way that God sees fit. And you've got to be the one to change. You've got to be the one to shift the way you think and the way you approach this situation with another person that you can't change. And it was really profound to me, you know, in that moment. And so I really had to do some soul searching and ask God, how can I move through this? How can I really set myself free from these feelings of anger and resentment towards my father? And so it's not that I hate my dad because I love my dad. I love my dad with everything in me. And that's the thing is I want to spend that time with my daddy because I love him. The expectation you had of your father that he may not be able to live up to and you're processing through letting the expectation go and accept what he can give. Boom, Lakeisha. And actually, I, that's one of my points that I want to talk about. And I'm going to get into my points in a minute, but I really wanted to give you a backdrop of my own life and just really kind of share my own story with you um, so that this makes a bit more sense and, and how I'm even working through my own process. So <clears throat> for me, God really has me on this journey of me being the one to change. And God is actually showing me my father. You know, it's one thing to, as we grow up, we see our parents, we look at our parents as the adults, as the parent. And a lot of times we don't consider their feelings, we don't consider maybe what they've gone through, what they've experienced, and why they are the way they are. We see them as a parent versus looking at them as a human, looking at them as a person, another person. So God has me in this season where he's showing me my father. He's showing me who my father is, not as my father, but as a man. And it's just so crazy because in so many moments where I want to be pissed off and I want to be mad, I feel nothing but compassion. Because I now understand, like, mm, you're parenting the best way that you know how. You didn't have your father. His father left him. And so for him, because he saw his mother have to grind and raise two kids as a single mother, you know, he had a resentment and anger towards his own father. And so he vowed to never be like his own father. But what happened is, is he kind of went to the other extreme where he feels like to him... He's working so much because he wants to support his family. And this is mindset. So God has shifted me to a space where I have to look at him as a person and understand he's doing the best that he can. He's only reacting based off of how he was raised and the things that he grew up with. In his mind, how he's processing things. Hi, Linda. How are you, love? Keisha, I have to come to terms with these same types of expectations concerning my mother just a few months ago. 
right? I have to get an understanding of who my mother is as a woman. And, and that's one thing that we, we fail to remember. We fail to, to take into consideration is that <clears throat> our parents are people. Um, whether they're our parents, whether they're, you know, exes or whoever it is that we have these feelings for, they're, they're people. And they have their own issues that they're dealing with. And a lot of times they're doing the best that they can. Um, and we have to be aware of that. We have to kind of look at it from a different lens. And so when it comes to this anger and resentment, there's three things that I kind of wanted to really touch base on. And like I said, a lot of this I'm working through myself. A lot, Some of it I've worked through before, but when those things come up for me in those moments, I'm realizing, Candace, you still need to kind of work on some of this, okay? So number one is that with this anger and this resentment, it's the pain that stems from unmet expectations. This anger and this resentment, there's pain in our hearts. There's something that has happened to us, and it's it's brought us this pain. But it stems from unmet expectations. We have these expectations of these people that they should be a certain way. You should be a certain way. You should do certain things. You should say certain things. And we have these expectations. But when they fall short, now we want to look at them like, well, you didn't do what I needed you to do. And because of that, we feel some kind of way. We feel this anger. We feel this resentment. You know, even if there's been opportunities or times that we've had where we communicated that to them, this is what I need. We have these expectations and we're holding these people to these expectations that what we need to understand is sometimes realistically, maybe they just cannot meet those. Maybe they cannot meet our expectations. Even as a mother, as a father, we have expectations as parents and what parents are supposed to do, right? But how many parents have their kids taken away from them because maybe they're not acting in that moment as a fit parent? <clears throat> and in reality of it, they're doing the best they can in that moment. Maybe they didn't have an example of a parent, so they don't know how to parent themselves. Maybe, you know, you've been in a relationship, you had a husband, or uh, maybe it's an ex, and, and things went south with you two, and you have this anger and resentment towards him, but maybe he did the best he could. Maybe he doesn't know how to be a husband. Maybe he never had you know, a, a model or a picture of what a husband was and what, how a husband was supposed to treat his wife. Maybe he's just doing the best that he can. So we've got to be careful with these expectations. We're putting these expectations on people that may sometimes be unrealistic, even though it may be reasonable to us. <laughs> Maybe it's not reasonable to them. Maybe they're trying the best they can. Maybe they hear you. They just don't know how. But I think a lot of times we fail to understand and understand that. And that's what brings me to um, number two. Lakeisha, same here. I thought I had dealt with work through these things. So my feelings were shocking. I'm one of those parents. <clears throat> and so these are things that we just have to work through. We have to be aware of them. We cannot work through these deeper feelings that really hold us back and keep us stuck if we want to acknowledge them. If we won't say, yes, it's here. Yes, these are my feelings. They're valid. They're real. And I have to work through them. So what's important is for us to understand and accept that other people don't always think the same way that we do. Um, it's something in their heart maybe that's keeping them from really understanding and acknowledging your pain. It's something in them that they just don't get it. And it's not like it's your fault you don't get it. They got to figure some things out. They have to figure some things out. We cannot have an expectation that they're going to understand and accept everything. Maybe they're trying the best that they can, but it's just not cutting it for you. So if we have an expectation of ourselves to grow and to become a better woman, sometimes we have that expectation of other people. Well, I expect for you to grow and become a better woman or a better man. I expect for you to want to be a better person. Maybe that's not their journey. Maybe that's not what God's calling them to do. Maybe that's not where they're at in their lives right now. We're have, we have an expectation of them based off of our own journey. We can't do that. That's not fair. They have their own journey and God has to deal with them. They have to work through their own things. And as much as it sucks, yes, I know you want them to understand your pain and what they've done and what they've put you through. I know you want them to understand that and I know you want them to change. But it's not fair for us to ask that of them. When maybe they have absolutely no idea how to do it and so a lot of times when people are asking something of us and we don't know how to do it we don't know how to be that person we shut down and so maybe they're shutting down because you keep harping on them about you wanting them to change and you have this anger and these feelings 
us, but they don't know what to do. So they shut down, and now we get mad at them again because now you shut down. And now I'm feeling rejected a moment again because you're shutting down when I'm trying to communicate to you what I need. They're shutting down because we're asking them to be someone maybe they just don't even know how to be. We just have to get over it in a good way, in a healthy way. And that's the thing, and, and people get so sensitive when, you know, you say, you got to get over it, you got to get over it. Okay, well, maybe not have to get over it, but you have to work through it. You have to work through it. You have to. Because you've got to be willing to set yourself free from these feelings because these feelings are in your heart. And they're holding you back. This other person either here nor there when it comes to what you feel and what you think on the inside. You got to fix that. You have to work through that. You have to understand what God says about you. And this is where we're getting to practicing that forgiveness. We've got to practice it. Forgiveness just doesn't come overnight. Like, I forgive you and everything's great. That's not realistic. <laughs> that doesn't always happen. Forgiveness is a process and forgiveness is like an everyday choice. Forgiveness is a choice. It is an everyday choice sometimes. Until we get to the point where we've actually released it and let it go. We've got to forgive every single day, even when this person is in the midst of doing something that is pissing us off. I choose to forgive you in this moment. But what we've got to do is we've really got to, you know, uplift ourselves and support ourselves with the word of God. <clears throat> so we've got to stay in the word of God and we really have to understand what God says about us and how God is our strength in the moments that we feel like we're weak and that we feel like we can't do this and we can't overcome this. God is our strength. We got to know who God says we are. We've got to understand that and we got to put things in perspective. And I, I, want to, I want you to understand this. We have to put things in perspective. If God is God of forgiveness and he forgives us for all the bull that we do day in and day out, even when we know it ain't right, if God will open the windows of to pour out forgiveness and love on us, then we have the ability to do that for someone else. Thank you, Linda. We have the ability to do that for someone else, but we have to choose that. We have to choose it. We want God to forgive us of our sins. So, you know, God even says that if we're not forgiving other, uh, other people of their sins, then how, how is God going to forgive us? And if I'm, I'm taking it there. Because we want to be forgiven, but we don't want to forgive other people. We don't want to practice forgiveness. We don't want to try to release ourselves from these feelings. We just want to sit in it and be mad at them and blame them for where we are and why we feel the way we feel. We don't want to accept responsibility for our own feelings. Yes, maybe they did something to hurt you. Maybe they were wrong. Yes, it doesn't negate that. But when are you going to accept responsibility for your own feelings and your own freedom? You set yourself free. God sets us free. So we have to understand, God, I'm praying to you, God, I'm out here acting a fool and, and, and living my life, not according to what you're saying, but yet I want you to forgive me. But I'm talking about this chick over here. I'm talking about my father and my parents and these people over here, and I'm pissed off at them because how they treated me. But oh God, you forgive me, Lord, forgive me, Jesus, for all my sins. But I won't take that same forgiveness that God's given me and give it to them. How dare us? How dare we ask God to forgive us and we refuse to forgive other people? Choosing to forgive and walking in forgiveness is not about <clears throat> saying that what you did to, to make me upset, what you did to you know make me angry and make me resentful, um, it's not negating that. It's not saying that it's okay. But I've got to learn how to shift my, my mindset to understand that I am responsible for the way I feel and I'm responsible for the way I move through life. I'm responsible for my own freedom. You're doing the best you can. Maybe in my eyes, that wasn't great, and that wasn't good enough, and that's not what I needed. But you got you to gotta go to God on that. And so we've got we've to gotta really practice praying for them. How many of you are praying for your enemies or praying for the people that have hurt you the most? And if I was to even take it deeper, 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 which I'm not going to go into it, but, I mean, if I'm taking it deeper, 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 if God is truly saying, I'm taking it deeper, 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 how many of us are praying for those who molested us? How many of us are praying for those who raped us? How many of those are praying for us, uh, for those who abandoned us and neglected us and abused us? Are we praying for them? Or are we just so hurt and angry and pissed at them that we live that every single day of our lives? And we cannot move into a freedom and a healing into our purpose because we won't let it go. Are you praying for them? 
Because clearly, if they did something like that to hurt you, whether it was intentional or, or, or not, it's neither here nor there. There is something on the inside of them that needs to be worked out with God. There is something on the inside of them that the enemy has come and taken over to where they felt like it was okay for them to do that to you. There was something on the inside of them that was planted, a seed that was birthed on them. Maybe years ago, maybe they were molested. Maybe they were hurt, abused, raped, whatever the case may be. Doesn't make it okay that they did it to you? No. But because we get so stuck in our own pain, we don't step out of our own pain to really objectively look at the other people and say, well, maybe your life was just jacked up and that's all you know. Maybe you came from an abusive household and that's how y'all show love is, you know, your father was beating the crap out of your mama and your sisters and you got beat. So now growing up, this is just what you know. And this is how you relate to other women. You beat them. We don't consider that. We never take the opportunity or the time to consider the entire context of what may have happened in someone else's life because we're so self-centered and selfish and concerned about our own selves sometimes. We've got to learn how to step out of us and consider the grand scheme of things and consider an eternal perspective. Yes, we're hurt. Yes, we're upset. Yes, we're angry. But we've got to do what it takes to set ourselves free. That person is not going to come set you free. That person may never apologize to you. That person may never understand your pain and your feelings. That person may never acknowledge that what they even did to you was wrong. That person may be completely confused and feel like they never did anything at all. If we hold ourselves up based on that person, we will never be set free. We will never walk in the freedom and the glory that God wants to show us. Us because we're holding on to what someone else did to us. We're holding on to a moment that the enemy has infiltrated and allowed to shift our lives and change our lives because he understands that if I can get to them at a young age, if I can let this happen to them young, maybe that would deter them from their course and from their path and from their purpose. And if they always feel like they're never good enough, if they always have these fears, if they always feel hurt, if they always feel angry and resentful and mad, if they're always cussing people out, then no one's ever going to work with them and they'll never feel like they can do more. If they never feel like they can do more, they won't walk in their purpose and they won't reach other people and they won't reach millions and they won't get their message to the masses and other souls will not be saved. Do you see the grand scheme of things? How the enemy will come to infiltrate your life and abort your purpose all from an incident, all from a season in your life that wasn't great. And he continually reinforces these feelings in your heart when things happen. When you're triggered in the moment and you're reminded of this, this experience with this person, no matter who it is or what happened, that's the enemy trying to reinforce it. Because if he can reinforce it, <clears throat> reinforce it randomly, then he drudges these feelings up again. And when he drudges these feelings up, now you're back in this, this, this space of resentment and you never let it go. And next thing you know, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12, 20, 30 years later, you still can't stand this person. You still haven't let it go because we've allowed the enemy to every day come in and trigger us to remind us of this pain because he knows that we're not going to choose to let it go. And the moment we're trying to get set free, the moment we're trying to make a decision to walk in freedom, something happens and it's like, boom, we're triggered in that moment again. And the enemy's like, no, she can't get free. I can't let her free because if she gets free, then she's a threat to me. So let me make something happen that triggers this anger and resentment in her again and make her mad all over again over something that happened 20 years ago. When are we going to make a decision in our hearts to say, in this moment, I refuse to be triggered. I refuse to be ticked off and set off. Let me practice forgiveness in this moment. Let me set myself free because I don't want to be mad all day. I just don't. I don't want to be mad and hurt and pissed all day. I don't want to have these memories flood into my head about what happened to me all day long. We can get triggered one time in the morning and jack up the rest of our day. You have to make a determination in your mind to cast down these thoughts. Cast them down. Think of these things that are pure, these things that are holy. Think of things that make you feel like a million bucks, that make you feel loved by God. Get in your word. Find out what God says about you. Restore yourself in a moment. Immediately go in there if you have to, but don't let him come and steal your joy in that moment by reminding you of something that happened way back when and it's not happening to you right now. You got to make a determination to let that go. And I'm not saying let it go as in what they did was right. Don't get me wrong. But yes, you have to make a determination to say, I'm going to release myself from these feelings of anger and resentment. 
and I'm going to practice love. He comes to to steal, kill, and destroy. Absolutely. We've got to become aware. We've got to become aware of these thoughts. We've got to become aware of when we're triggered so that we understand there's some things that we still need to work on. Yes, I may want you to change, but that's pretty much it. You know, like I may want you to change, but I just want you to change. That doesn't mean you're going to change. That doesn't mean you want to change. Let me take you to the throne of grace because whatever it is that's in you, maybe God needs to deal with you on. Let me pray for you. You hurt me, but let me not stoop to your level. Let me be the bigger person and practice grace. And it's a test of our character. It's a test of our character and it's a test of our heart when we can finally say, let me practice forgiveness. I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but today, let me try and practice it. Let me have a conversation with God and ask God, God, really open up the depths of my heart and show me myself. Show me how I've even responded to other people based off of this situation that happened with me. Show me how I've even hurt other people. Because maybe I didn't understand that what I was doing was hurtful. Maybe other people had expectations of me and I let them down. You ain't perfect, baby, and neither are they. We have got to take ownership of our own feelings and our own freedom. We've got to learn when enough is enough. And we've got to say, I want to set myself free. We've got to learn how to practice this this forgiveness and we've got to learn how to love the very person that maybe we hate. It's not saying I love what you did, but if God can love me unconditionally, if God can show me this, God show me how to be more like you. It's a work in progress, I understand that. It's not going to happen overnight and it takes growth and it takes consistent effort every single day to make a determination to live like this. But you can do it. You can do it. You have a story to tell. You have a story to tell. God won't put nothing more in you than you can bear. So if it happens to you, God wants you to understand how can I use my story of what happened to me to deliver the next woman out of her hell. Maybe she's dealing with this right now. I've gone through it. Maybe I'm still working through it, but there's something that I can give you. There's some wisdom gems that I can give you in this moment. Let me pour into you, sister. And it's in those moments that we understand that how God has brought us through. Even if we still have those feelings sometimes of anger and of resentment, We have to understand that we didn't die in that. And it's in those moments that we see our own strength. And it's in those moments that we can say, God, help me to to move on this journey of forgiveness and healing myself. Help me to forgive, Lord. I understand that it's going to be an everyday process and every day I'm going to have to come to you and not only ask you forgiveness for my sins and the things that I've done, but I need you to help me to learn to forgive them. Because what they've done to me has, has maybe carved such a deep hole in my heart that I now don't know how to respond to people. I now don't know how to interact with people because there's such a hole in my heart from where they have hurt me. Help me. Help me, Lord, to understand how to forgive. So we've got a number one. We've, we've got to understand that this anger and resentment, this pain is stemming from unmet expectations. We're asking of some people something that they're just not able to deliver. Um, number two, we've got to understand and consider the fact that maybe they just don't know how to be to you what you need. Maybe they never had a model of a, of a husband. Maybe they never had a model of a father or a mother. Um, maybe they never had a model of, of what it is that you needed. So they don't know how to bring that to you. They don't know how to give that to you. We have to sometimes step out of ourselves in our own pain to understand maybe what pain they're dealing with. What happened to you? that made you the way that you were. We gotta step out of ourselves to understand that. And then number three, we've gotta practice forgiveness. We've gotta get in our word and and really pour into ourselves what God is saying about us. Because if we don't know that, we can't fight the attacks of the enemy. The enemy is not going to leave based off of what you say. I can't give the enemy Candace's word. Well, Candace says X, Y, and Z. What, who are you? You ain't God. If we don't have a word, we have no weapon, we can't fight. You're going, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of you are going to war with a weapon. They are staring you in the face, and they have guns and knives and spears and you know, horses, and they got all kinds of stuff. And you come and you stand in there absolutely empty with no armor, with no weapon, with no nothing. How are you going to fight? You're going to get beat. So we've got to get in a word, get that word in our heart, so that we can fight the enemy when he comes at us in those moments. It's imperative. If you don't hear nothing else I'm saying today, 
Get in your word and find out what God says about you and how he would be your strength and weakness and how his grace is sufficient for you. So no matter what you have dealt with, what you have gone through, has purpose. And how all things work. All things work. All things work for the good of those who love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. Not, not just great things, not just the good things, not just the things that happen on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But the bad things, the scary things, the things that we're ashamed of, the things that we're embarrassed to tell. The things that are deep, dark in here that nobody even knows. All things work together for good of those who love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. We have to start believing the word of God. We have to know the God. So we've got to get into our word and we've got to put things in perspective and understand that if we're asking God to, to forgive us, then he's also asking us to forgive them. So that means we've got to pray for them. We've got to pray for them. We've got to lift them up before God to say, God, you need to work on this. On them. And it may not look the way we want it to look. We ain't God. Thank God. We ain't God. <laughs> but nonetheless, we need to bring them to the throne of grace and say, God, they got some things they need to work on. I don't know what's going on in their heart and their mind, whatever happened in their life, but they got some things they need to work on. So Jesus, can you go visit them tonight? Sometimes we just got to do that. And this is a daily practice. We practice it every single day. Every single day. Because the enemy's not going to let up on you. He's going to try to come at you every single day. He doesn't want you to be free. He doesn't want you to be free. And I am on a mission for millions waging war against the spirit of fear. This, this fear has held us back for so long. We've allowed these situations that happen in our life to tell us something about ourselves, something about the world, something about other people. And we refuse to move forward because of fear. Because we don't feel worthy. Because we feel like we can't make it. Whatever happened that still has this anger and resentment floating around in our hearts, we've got to release it. We've got to release it. And so this is, we're spending an entire month in the Queen's Courage Camp talking about this. And this is really only for the Queen's Courage Camp. But you won't get this at my workshops. You won't, you won't get this at my retreats. It's only going to be in the six-month mastermind that starts on June 5th where you're going to get a whole month where we're talking about forgiveness and really how to to release these things and I'll show you how to walk through it how to do the scary things every single day and this is about a sisterhood that we're creating because we need support when it comes to that a lot of a lot of stuff that we're dealing with is pretty heavy and we it's hard for us to do it alone and i wouldn't recommend you do it alone because a lot of times when we try to do things alone if it doesn't work we find ourselves in this place of isolation and when we're in isolation that's when the enemy comes to talk to us the most so I'm trying to create a community of women who can lift each other up and who can support each other in the toughest moments of our lives, maybe, so that we can do the very scary things that we never thought we could do. This is a six-month mastermind where we're starting off with writing the vision and making a plane. You're going to get on a one-on-one -on -one call with me, and we're really going to hash out what is it that you want? What is your vision? Where do you see yourself? Not just in five years or 10 years, but, you know, next year, where do you see yourself? Who do you want to be? Who is she? We're going to make that vision clear. So that the following month, now we can actually walk through the process of becoming her. It's time to become her. And so month one, we're, month two, we're going to talk about really discovering that root of the fear and the feelings of unworthiness. What happened? Where did it root? Where did it take place? Where did the enemy come and infiltrate your life and plant that seed that has grown and you fed it all this time? And now you can't do the things you want to do because you're held back. We're going to be exposing this in your life. And this is, I'm telling you, baby, this is going to get deep. And But you're going to be so set free and so delivered by December, you're not going to know who you are. And then after that, we're going to talk about how can I reframe my life more positively? How can I step away from those, that spirit of shame and that spirit of embarrassment and learn to tell my story so that God gets the glory from it? And understanding that, you know, his grace is sufficient for me and that I do have strength. Like, I made it out of that. I didn't die in that. That is strength. How can I look at what happened to me in a different perspective where it's not taking me down, but now it's lifting me up? And then from, from there, after we really learn how to shift our minds, after I show you how to shift your mindset so that you're thinking differently, and after I show you some cognitive practices, now we're going to actually put courage into action. This is where we're doing scary things. We're doing things that we never thought we could do, things that we've avoided our entire lives, having conversations with people that we never wanted to have. Going after the very things that we want to do, and we're putting action to it. And I'm walking with you hand in hand to say, okay, what is your plan of action this week? How are you becoming her? And then lastly, we're going to move into the consistency and accountability. How can I partner with other women of God who will support me and uplift me and pray for me when I feel like giving up? When I feel like this isn't working? When I don't know what else to do when I'm confused and I'm frustrated? 
How can I be consistent so that I can see the glory of the Lord, so I can see his blessings, so I can obtain the very thing that he has for me? How can I not give up? Because it gets difficult. It gets hard. It's been plenty of times I was like, deuces, I'm done. I'm so over everything right now. But what's the alternative for me to go back to the life I was living? No, you know what? Never mind. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> How can we not give up? And then lastly, we end the six-month mastermind with a five-day international retreat in the Dominican Republic where we're actually able to kind of touch and feel on and, and love on these ladies that we've spent the last five months with. Where we can have this community of support and we can, you know, really reach out to another community and learn the ways of life and somewhere else and really participate in what they do every day and, and really do scary things. This is where we're going to have a blast and we're going to have fun and we're going to empower each other and we're going to encourage each other to move in courage. Doing scary things. Who doesn't want to do scary things in the Dominican Republic? I do. Sign me up. So this is what the Queen's Courage Camp is all about. It's about shifting your life and becoming her. And before we even get into the next year, you will be her. You will see the transformation in your life. You will feel that courage and that confidence because you finally addressed the, the scary things. You finally addressed the things that were in your heart that were holding you back. You actually have an understanding now of what's been holding you back. You're clear. God is going to give you revelation and insight onto what it was in here, in your heart, that has kept you stuck. And then God is going to show you with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding how you can take baby steps to move forward. How you can finally approach these very scary things that have frightened you for so long, that have tormented you for so long, that have brought you pain for so long. God is going to finally lift that up off of you and start showing you who you really are. You are her, but it's all about becoming her. We can make a decision to become her or not. You see her. When are you going to make a commitment to yourself and say yes to her? To say, I want to be, I want to live like this anymore. I don't want to be angry anymore. I don't want to have these feelings of resentment anymore. I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of being lonely. I just, <laughs> there's a better version of yourself that I'm, I'm sure you see. I'm sure you see a better version of yourself. So it's like, how do I get to her? And that's what I show you. God has gifted me to show women how to go from fearful to fearless, how to go from, you know, this, this place of where you are right now to what your vision and your goal is. God has gifted me to work with women to show them how to uncover the dirty things and how to remove them so we can replace them with things that are going to be more fulfilling, that are going to give you a sense of accomplishment and that's going to shift your life into that next level. And I, and I say this a lot, and I'm going to continue to say it because God told me this last year. He said, we're entering into a season where I'm about to start pouring out my blessings. But I need you to be a voice of healing and restoration for them, Candace, because many of them are not in position to receive. The truth is, many of you are not in position to receive what God is trying to give you. Because you keep holding on to what was and letting that go to find out what is. It's time for you to make a determination and a decision and, and, and set your intentions to say yes to yourself and to say, I want to get in position because I know what God has for me is great. And if I choose not to get in position, I could miss everything. The last thing I want is for this time next year, you to still be struggling with the same thing you're struggling with today. This anger and this resentment and this pain and you're still in the same place that, that, that you are now. No growth, no nothing. It's up to you to say yes to yourself and make a determination and decision. I can't say yes for you, but I can't present you with an opportunity for you to say yes to yourself. An opportunity for you to take your life, not just your personal life, but your relationship with God, your relationship with your family, and your relationship in business to another level. That's what I'm here for. So if you know that you want to be a part of the Queen's Courage Camp, it's only 10 women. I'm only allowing some, 10 women into the Queen's Courage Camp. If you know that you're like, I need to say yes to myself because of some things that I need to work through. And I don't want to be dealing with this next year. I don't want to leave a legacy of low self-esteem for, for my kids. I don't want to, you know, they're watching us. They're watching your decisions. And they're watching how you move through life. And if you're moving through life in low self-esteem, if you're moving through life in, in mediocre and not really following your own dreams and walking through your own purpose, that's what they're going to learn. You're modeling that for them. So when God gives a dream, then they're not going to go for their dream because you didn't go for yours. And nine times out of ten, you will sit up there and say, go for your dream, go for your dream. Well, it's one thing to say it, but it's another thing to do it. If you're not doing it, then why are they going to go for their dream? And so the cycle continues. 
The cycle continues. If we don't make a decision to change where we are right now and to become her, how will our kids do the same thing? They won't. Because they're going to grow up with all they know. All they know is mommy lived a mediocre life. She went to work every day. She was always unhappy. She was, you know, she she participated in all kinds of things she ain't had no business doing. And and they watch you as they're young. They're going to grow up and they're going to have a whole story about how you lived your life. And they're going to learn from you. Either they're going to be just like you or they're going to be the total opposite. Mommy didn't follow her dream. So, you know, I don't know if I can do mine. She never pumped me up. And told me to follow my dream, so maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just go get a job and live a mediocre life myself. When are we going to leave a legacy of hope and courage for the next generation? They have got to have the hope. They've got to know that there's so much more for them. If they're young girls, they got to know that they can become her. If they're young gentlemen, they got to know that they, be, they can become him. But if you're not showing them, then they'll never know. So it's time for you to say, I want to become her. And I'm starting today, I'm making a decision today to do the scary things and to walk in courage. Hi, Amaka, how are you, love? You say yes. That's the thing. We've got to make a decision to say yes to ourselves every single day. So if you're feeling like you want to be one of the 10 women in the Queen's Courage Camp, I want you to go to bit.do slash free call with Candace M. Gray. B-I-T dot D-O slash free call with Candace M. Gray. And then it's going to take you to an application. It's a quick application. I want to be sure that just we're a good fit. And I want to I want to know your commitment level. I want to know if you're committed to yourself. It's not about being committed to me and what was about to happen. It's about being committed to you and knowing that on the other side of this is nothing but greatness. And I'm going to I'm going to smash fear in the face and I'm going to walk in courage because that's what God is calling me to do. I'm a face smasher when it comes to fear. I want to smash fear in the face. I'm tired of it taking my life. I'm tired of holding me hostage from becoming the woman that God is calling me to be and from having the things that God wants me to have and from pouring into the women that God is calling me to. I can't be her if I'm full of fear, if I'm full of feelings of unworthiness and feeling like I can't do it and I'll never be good enough and I don't have enough education and I don't have enough time and energy and money and I don't and what if and what if. It's time out for that. When are you going to trust God to say, God, I want to step out on faith. I want to jump out on faith. I want to leap out on faith. I want to fly out on faith, knowing that you're going to catch me. Because that's the only way that I'm going to get there. What's the options? Your option is to stay where you are right now and live in the little mediocre life that you're living right now. and You're not even happy. Or to do something totally different, totally scary, and just trust God to make it happen. And when you trust God to make it happen, I promise you, he will. He'll make it happen. But we've got to believe the word of God over the word of the enemy. Word of needs to continually come and make you feel like you're less than. But if we believe that every day, guess what? 10, 20 years from now, we're going to be less than. When that's not what God is calling us to be. Say yes to yourself and be who God is calling you to be. That life is so much better than what you're living right now. What God is calling me to is so much better than what I'm living right now. I want it. I want every bit of it. Give all of it to me. I'm willing to do what it takes, and I know it's going to be a journey, and I know the journey might not always be smooth, but at the end of that journey, and as I move through that journey, I'm going to see my growth. Even in my own life, you know, I told you guys, if you're just coming in with me um, at the beginning of this broadcast, so catch the replay. I told the story of my father and how this anger and resentment really relates to my own story. So we've got a determination and a decision to say, I just want to be better. I just want to be better. I just want more. But I don't want to be scared to go get it. I don't. I just don't want to be scared anymore. I just want to leap out and just trust you, God, because I know that life is amazing. How bad do you want it? That's my question to you. How bad do you really want it? How bad do you want to be her? That vision that God has given you, that thing that he told you to do that you ain't even started doing yet, how bad do you want it? Success can be scary, absolutely. But success is freeing. In our lives, success in our family relationships, in our businesses, in our relationship with God. No more dysfunctional relationships when I know how to communicate with you better, when we're loving on each other, we're not fighting and arguing as much anymore. In our businesses, when we can accept opportunities, when we can walk in confidence and say yes to ourselves, when opportunities present themselves that maybe we feel like terrified to even accept. 
I'm doing it myself. I'm learning to say yes to myself. And when it comes to this anger and resentment and really learning to love the person you hate or love the person that you have these feelings towards, I'm walking it out of my own life. I'm not going to come up here and teach you to do something that I'm not doing. God is calling me to be a leader and to be an example. So what does that mean? That means I have to walk it out of my own life before I can come on a platform and tell you how to do it. I got to know how to do it. God is calling me to mend my own broken relationships and work through my own feelings of anger and resentment and to practice forgiveness every single day. If I can do it, so can you. Yes, your story may be different from mine, but it doesn't change the fact that there's some things that you have to work through. That don't change the fact. So my question to you is if you're going to say yes to yourself, if you're going to set yourself free and say no more, I don't want to be angry no more. I don't want to be unforgiving no more. I don't want to be resentful anymore. Yes, it still hurts, but God, heal my heart. And why you got to heal their hearts? Because clearly they got some things they need to work through. So I was going to put, I don't know, I was going to put the, I'm going to put this link in the chat for you, okay? Because if, if you're feeling like, if God is calling you in this moment to, to step up, oh, y'all can't see me. <laughs> if God is calling you in this moment to step up, then I want you to step up. And I'm going to give you an opportunity right now to step up. Bit.do slash free call with Candace Gray. I'm going to put it in here for you right now. Free call with Candace. It's good to do it on my computer. I don't know how to spell my name. No. See y'all? I love y'all though. Thank you for sitting here with me. Candace. Okay, bit.do slash free call with Candace M. Gray. So if God is calling you right now to say yes to yourself and you know there's some things that you need to work through and it's held you back long. long if you're fed up enough, and that's the thing, you gotta be fed up enough. You gotta be to the point like I can't do this no more. I, let me let me change, let me just change my course of my life because I can't do this no more. You gotta be fed up enough. If you're fed up enough, come see me. Get in my inbox, go to bit.do slash free call with Candace and Gray. We start on June 5th, June 5th for the Queen's Courage Camp. Feel free to share this message out if you want. But I'm taking 10 women who are ready to take their lives to the next level. And when I say next level, I'm not talking about next year, the year after, the year after. I'm talking about right now. Right now. There's some things that you've been asking God for. And the Queen's Courage Camp is your answer to get it. So ladies, I love you so much. I love you so much. Um... I'm done. I just really want you to be encouraged. I really want you to be encouraged and understand that God has so much more for you. But you got to take it. He has a platter of blessings that he's handing you, but it's up to you to take what you need. Don't just stare at it. He's giving you the opportunity to have grace, to have forgiveness, to have peace. Finally, to have peace. He's giving you the opportunity. It's up to you to say yes. So if you're saying yes to yourself and you want to be a part of the Queen's Courage Camp, bit.do slash free call with Candace M. Gray. Ladies, I love you so much. If you don't have any comments or questions, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. If you do, if you're catching the replay, um, go ahead and type them in the chat box and then I'll be sure that I get back to them. All right. I love y'all so much. Candace M. Gray, the Courage Coach, signing off. Mwah. Have a good weekend.